This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. You want to get high? You want to get high? You want to get high? Welcome back again. Um, now that I've shown you how to set this thing up and what it looks like out of the box, today we're going to hang it in my veg station. So what I've done is taken everything out, considering I just did a little upgrade recently and made the room. It's kind of funny that I'm already doing this upgrade and uh, reconfiguring everything I just did. But this needs to be put in so I can maximize my plant growth and I need to cover my entire space with a bigger footprint. So let's get to going on this and hanging it. Well, before we get to hanging it, I'll show you a little upgrade on uh, a little update on my progression of my tent. As you can see, there's nothing here at the moment, but uh, I got one package in today. Got my fans, my clip-ons, nothing fancy to look at there, but before you know it, we're going to have all kinds of equipment just lined up in there. And then we'll put it all together with uh, another video coming up next week. But for now, let's go have a look over here what I'm building. Like I say, we're going to hang the T5 back in here. Took everything out, all my totes that were underneath the canopy there, all my wood I took out. Swept up real good, even though I'm about to make some more sawdust. I swept before I started working and uh, surveyed my situation here. And then basically I need a stud right down the middle here. And I don't have anything in the, inside the ceiling. Only thing I have is a 16 inch on center studs here and here. So what I'm going to have to do is span the area here with some wood. Come back here, span the area with some wood. And then I'll put a piece of wood right down the middle of it. That way I'll create another stud right in the middle and be able to hang everything centrally right down the right down the middle there. And it should come out pretty good. So let me get to cutting some wood and I'll hang up my eye beam. That's what I'm gonna call it, because it's gonna be shaped like an eye. And uh, we'll see how she turns out. Well, as you can see, I got my little helper with me. She came up and decided to be uh, the supervisor for the situation here. Got my tools out, got my drills, got my saw, got my uh, drill bits, screwdriver bits, and then I went back out in my garage and found some more scrap wood that just laying around not doing nothing. So I'm going to put it to work. And uh, got my couple cross beams that are going to go crosswise like this, and then that one's going to be the one that goes down the middle since it's nice and long. So, And then I'm going to take some eye hooks, screw them in, and then I'll be able to hang my chains nicely from there. So. Let's uh, get to cutting some wood. Look at that. She's already laying down on the job. You're not a very good supervisor, Sophie. You're going to have to be uh, pink slipped or something like that at the end of the night. I don't know. You're not going to work out too well like this. What I did to make things easier is I held this up to the ceiling and I marked my studs where they were from the old holes that I had um, my little um, hooks in and um, just marked it lightly and able to uh, pre drill my holes. Let the screws just fit through the hole and leave myself a little bit on the extra on the bottom there. And that's going to be the amount that goes into my rafters above my head. And um, one reason I did this here is because this piece of wood here is pressure treated 2x4. And if you try to put a screw through that, you're really going to have a tough time. So what I did is just find a drill bit just as big as a thread so I didn't fall through with the head there. And uh, pre-drilled my holes. Now I'm going to go ahead and hang this up on the ceiling. And there you go. That's cleat number one. Well, if you look at my situation here, I got a, a light right in the way here, a four foot where I need to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come past it and run this side of the light with this beam here. And I should have just enough room to squeeze it along the top of my nutrient bottles and be able to get this up in here. And then I'll do the same as I did down there. Mark my holes, put the screws in, and then get ready for the cross beam. So it'll be a little bit longer than I need, but that's okay because I have that long piece of wood to do the job and it doesn't hurt to have a little extra wood sometimes. <laughs> that's what she said. Well, I'll mark my holes and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to pre-drill my holes here. It's just much easier to kind of see through that. And there we go. We got our holes drilled. Now let's go hang it. My hardware today is just a coarse thread. Actually, this is more of a fine thread drywall screw. About a, I don't know, it's about a two and a half inch, three incher. And then I got some smaller ones here for the cross member. That's uh, only three quarter of an inch thick wood, so I should have plenty of meat to grab a hold of with that. No problem. 
one little idea I want to give you guys. If you ever having a tough time getting um, like a screw or something up into an old piece of wood, like old structures of houses, the wood oftentimes is so freaking hard you just strip out your screw head. So this one here damn near didn't get in, so I had to pound it in the rest of the way with a hammer, which is always a task. And on the other end, I just took a nail and used the nail to get through those old pieces of wood because they're so strong and, and hard. They don't make wood like they used to, man. So the, uh, oftentimes, a nail is your better friend than a screw in this old wood. That's the moral of my story here. So let's get that cross member in, and then we can hang the light. Another small tip, if you don't have a pencil to make your mark, many times you can just use a little screw to make a little scratch mark or something. When you're doing rough carpentry like this, it really doesn't matter. You know, anything to get the job done. As you can see, I got it up in the middle there, and I measured the distance across, figured out it was 35 inches across, and I marked it at 17 and a half inches right in the middle there, so I had everything centered, and I came down here. I marked my holes, pre-drilled my holes, and now we're just gonna finish this up with the last little screw here. Beautiful. So there it is, it's the I-beam that I'm gonna hang my little hanging hook from, and the light should be very secure with no threat of it falling down or having any damage done to the plants below, which would be a travesty, which is something I've seen happen a couple times. It even happened to me twice in one week one time. So, yeah, make sure your stuff is tight and, and right, and uh, you have no problems with scary situations. So let me uh, get my light in here and my little hooks, and we'll get everything back together, and then we'll fire it up. The hooks I've chosen today to go with to hang my lights were uh, these ones here I had laying around the house. They're actually better for like using out in the garage for hanging bicycles and stuff like that of more weight. So I know for sure that this thing will hold up to anything I throw at it. And not to mention it's pretty nice and easy to uh, find your hook real, you know, um, except simply from far back here because I'm going to be reaching over and trying to do stuff with my chains for the moment until my rope, rope ratchets get in. I don't have them in yet. So I'll be using chains for now, and then when the rope ratchets get here, I'll be able to probably maybe put a pulley here so I can just pull on that, and it'll raise up the back end for me, so I ain't got to reach over as far. That's my plan for the future, but for now i got to use these dumb hooks. And I'm going to space them out 47 inches apart, or 46, I don't know, i got to do a measurement on the light to see exactly how far apart the hangers are, and then I'll just uh, hang them right from there. Here's part of this system you never see. Those little blue toes I was just working on right there. Well, those get stored under here all the time. That's why I built this station here. It's basically how she looks. So it's all set and completed and put together. Out of sight, out of mind. And then I put my little one foot section in there. My little extra added workspace. And that all goes away. And I create myself a beautiful grow chamber with storage underneath. And there we go. She's hung. Let's get her loaded with plants and see what happens. Catch you on the next video. You keep watching. I'll keep growing. Peace, guys.